Hey, we're live. Yes, we are. On Janice's Facebook page. So welcome to Out of the Box 2021, the healthcare edition. So I'm with Janice. Janice, this is your show, but I am John Rothwell, doctor of nursing practice, uh, the provider and owner of Island Direct Primary Care. And so we're here a, a day late uh, because life gets in the way and we definitely have all kinds of things to do, but uh, here we are. How are you doing, Janice? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah, are you life- done messing with your hair? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. You know, I got to always mess with my hair. Even Me too. Kind of, you know, anytime I put it up in my head like this, I'm having like a crazy hair day, which is like Ooh. almost every day. Yeah, your hair looks amazing. I have, a, I have a little bit right there. Oh, that's, that's, and what's this? What's all of this? going on this is wisdom (laughs) (laughs) or this could be my children i've been dealing with dealing with a lot of things with with my i i have adopted children i have a blended family or you know mixed children in in my biological son's my youngest he's 21 and so um we're going through uh the maturation process and everybody's living out on their own now and so i think my son is run by his hormones rather than his brain or they kind of run together so well that's everybody pain. though that's our, it is hey that was a really good did you do that on purpose you're so you're so sneaky i like it i like it so today we're talking about hormones and we didn't even uh practice that but good job good job there i like it slide those hormones right slide in. the hormones right in here <laughs> okay so we're going to talk about hormones today if you're here watching live remember you can comment we will not address it during this live but we will come back and we'll respond to your comments and maybe even uh address it in the next one but today we're going to talk about hormones and the huge role that they play in everybody's life even if Most people don't give them credit. And uh, before we got on live, we were chatting about it a little bit and we decided that Janice knows things. You do. I I think you were talking about me. Well, not really. You know, it's funny. um, I've had my practice for next week's two years. And so we are, thank you. We're approaching 300 members. Um, So that's kind of cool. We signed up two small businesses uh, this week. And um, so we kicked off January very, very nicely. And um, and we're still in talks with a, a, a medium-sized business, has about 200 and something employees that are looking to add direct primary care to their uh, to their benefits package. So that's um, lots and lots of exciting things going on in, in the practice. So for me, I'm like, you know what? I need to make sure I stay healthy right. <laughs> while I'm taking care, you know, working with other people. And so... Last year, I changed my diet, and so I kind of eat very clean, anti-inflammatory-like, except for Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. Um, I had the meat sweats a couple times this weekend because we just, me and my buddy, were, were just gourmet fooding. Um, so I did my own labs. And oh. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I'll share them, right? And so for those of you guys who really want to know, I will be 51 this year. And so, um, you know, at the age between 40 and 45, men go through change too, just often like women. And one of those things is testosterone. So testosterone is hard to build muscle. Um, testosterone helps keep, give you energy, um, build muscle, keeps you from being fatigued. Uh, you know, just that energizer, right? And so everyone says back in the 70s and 80s when guys were shooting up roids, um, they get, you know, that's their anger things like how much testosterone, uh, hair, you know, hair is a big thing. And so I'm bald. I've been losing my hair since 22. And so I'm 51 this year. And it's like, okay, well, what is my testosterone level? And um, the normal varies between like 250 and 1100. Um, I'm 1069 girl. I'm okay. Okay. All right, let me stop you. (laughs) Let me stop you for just a moment. I have a couple things to say. Yes. First of all, let's not say normal. Let's say range. The range. Yes. Let's be. 
Yeah, the range um, is. And then also, let's also note that for people who don't really think about it or realize it, testosterone affects women also because women we haven't have got there yet. I'm I know, there. I know, I know. So, all right. So I impeded on your um, moment of bragging. It, Go ahead. You no, know, it kind of was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But that's okay. It's okay. You know, because I can only talk about me. I can't talk about my patients and stuff. So I can only say what, what mine is. And so reality is, is that a lot of men, uh, as they start to age, you know, they want testosterone replacement and there are other hormones that are involved and other things that are involved that are precursors to your hormones. And so once you get to the root cause of why are you depleting hormones? So um, we'll use an abbreviation because when you look up supplements, you see DHEA and DHEA is a precursor to hormones. So I actually take that supplement. So that is why my, my uh, testosterone is higher, not because I'm building it naturally. Okay. Okay. So, okay. But it also means that I don't have to take, I'm not taking testosterone and I don't have to. And that's good, you know, because, uh, you know, I don't care what people say. Supplements are still um, pills yeah. or, you know, injections. It's still, you know, medi it, it might not be pharmaceutical medication, but it's still something. And right. so I want to do as, mo as, as many natural things and holistic things as possible rather than pharmacology. So which brings me back to women, right? So women... Same thing with testosterone. So polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS, or you know, uh, or women who actually have bad menstrual cycles, um, ovarian cysts, those kind of things often have not only excess estrogen, which is a whole other hormone, but they may actually have excess testosterone, and um, you know, so they may be, uh, uh, you know, have a little mustache, you know, facial hair, and these kind of things, which you know, acne. Um, all these things, which can be very, very, um, you know, emotionally draining. Um, but there are good things that go with that too. And there are, yes. And so that's where testosterone replacement actually kind of helps a woman who's, let's say, postmenopausal. Um, because when women who are postmenopausal, um, they have zero, like zero progesterone and their estrogen may be lower. So they may or may not need some of that. So you elevate the progesterone and give them a little bit of testosterone and then they gain their libido back and right. that's kind of cool so, so a woman with a high testosterone level is it. is what may not need that and so testosterone that the body doesn't use actually turns into estrogen so oftentimes with women who have um high testosterone often have signs and symptoms of what we call estrogen dominance so hot flashes okay all right let me stop you because no. there are several things i want to loop back to yes yeah i'm in the driver's seat on this conversation so, <laughs> who am i kidding i'm in the driver's seat every time we have a conversation <laughs> whether i really am or not drive my own train i drive my own train darn it yep. yep okay so um let me organize my thoughts for a moment so one thing I want to say, though, about testosterone, so a higher testosterone level, am I right or wrong here, contributes to um, muscle density as well, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So that's We're one of the benefits for women who have higher testosterone levels because, you know, the polycystic ovarian syndrome and, you know, all that. Yes, I know because I have that. I have polycystic ovarian. So... I do have higher testosterone levels. And so I do know the benefits. I know the drawbacks, but I choose to focus on the benefits. And uh, so we'll leave that there. Looping all the way back to something that you said um, when you were explaining why your testosterone levels are higher than the range, which made you happy. And you explained- um, well, It was the top that, end of the range, not higher than the range. So okay, just put the top okay. end of the range here. All right, so top end of the range. And so you explained though, that the reasoning behind that you attributed to, again, you, a supplement that you take, is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, so to, to explain that again, tell me um, what supplement it is that you take 
why you take it and how it contributes to your testosterone levels. Well, that gets real biochemistry. I'm not going to no, get no, into no, that. No. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. All I want you to say is this is the supplement I take. Yep. What is it? DHEA. DHEA. Where do you buy D- that? DHEA. Okay. Um, my patients get uh, typically, I send them a recommendation from Full Scripts, uh, which is a supplement pharmacy. They have third party tested supplements, and I can actually look at, look at the ingredients that are in there. Some, you never know what you're going to get with supplements. And so, especially oh, if you yeah. buy them at some of the more mainstream stores. Mm-hmm. Um, so, often in order to make them cheaper, to ha- sell them for a better profit, uh, you cut corners or you might have different additives and stuff like that. And so I choose to, uh, to do it different. Um, so yeah. most of my patients get, I send them a brand and then they can shop it. Typically they'll shop it on Amazon, but, but my members get a pretty good price. So, um, yeah, you know, they, well, they, and that's they, a broader conversation yeah. because that's something that I, you know, I take a few different supplements and mm-hmm. not a big, uh, pharmaceutical span. Yep. But I do take a few supplements and it's overwhelming trying to decide which What's one good. to buy. Yeah. Because if you if you look at a supplement and say, you know, one source it's it's twenty dollars and one source it's ten dollars, of course your your logic brain goes, Oh, I'm gonna buy the ten dollar one, but that's not a good idea if the ten dollar one doesn't do anything. But you don't really know. You don't really know if it is or not. So that's valuable information. It's, it's huge. And so that's why a lot of my patients, it, it's frustrating and overwhelming for them, but we focus on gut health first because yeah. you could learn so much about how your body responds to something once you eliminate it. And then yeah. once you start to add it back in, including these hormones or precursor to hormones or supplement, you know, vitamins or mineral, whatever it is, cause it's a broad range. I mean, um, most of my patients that are on sex hormone therapy, like estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, those, the testosterone is often injectable, but some of my males, uh, they don't like shots. So that comes into a compounded cream or lotion. And I do the same thing for women. And then sometimes women have um, a, a patch instead of a, a cream or, or a lotion. So it just kind of depends. Uh, one of the nice values of testosterone too n- helps with muscle density that you were saying um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. can help with weight loss, right? Because it helps build muscle and you need, and muscle helps burn fat. So, so, so looping back then, so DHEA, and that's a supplement that you take and, mm-hmm. and you can uh, make a recommendation as to a, a brand, right? So I use pure encapsulation most of the time. Um, Say that again? Pure, P-U-R-E, encapsulation. Um, that's a brand? That's a brand. Pure, yep. Okay. Pure, pure encapsulation. And so most of most of their products I can get um, without any additives and stuff like that. So I can buy gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, grain-free, corn-free, dairy-free. I mean, so nice. I basically get it without all those um, high-sensitivity uh, ingredients. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I use them, but there's ca- times like there, I don't use pure encapsulation for everything because sometimes I'll search them and they'll have soy in it. And while for some people, soy can tolerate it. Um, my wife is hypothyroid. In other words, she has low thyroid hormone and it, which is very, very common. And, um, people who have autoimmune thyroid, they tend to actually have sensitivities to soy and dairy and stuff like that. So it's just easier to just deal away with all the additives. It's better for you anyways. And um, so that's the direction I go, but there's, there's more than, there's more than one product. Then I kind of shop on price a little bit and then judge. So for me, um, you know, there's a lot of natural ways to determine if your testosterone is low or not, um, you know, besides sexual function, right? Like erectile dysfunction or being able to keep an erection for a long time when it comes to men. Um, you know, if you're not getting erection in the middle of the night, like you were when you're younger, then your testosterone may be lower. Right. Um, so that's kind of like, you know what? I read that one time and I started thinking and I'm like, does that happen to me in the middle of the night anymore? And so it was so funny. Cause one night I'm like, Oh yeah. I'm good. 
<laughs> okay, stop. Okay, stop. <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. So, man okay. stuff. It is man stuff. It's but, man okay. stuff. Okay, it's man stuff. You're blushing. So, I am. I am. Stop. So, so that R rated you, live. Goodness gracious. Okay. So, you got me all rattled. Stop. So, the DHEA, yes. you were taking that for uh, to support your workout? Or so, what yeah, made so, you decide to start taking it? Don't yeah, embarrass so me again. I, <laughs> I wanted to see if it worked, right? I wanted okay. to see, you know, okay. I mean, I read Fair all enough. the literature and stuff like that. Cool. And most of my male patients, my male patients aren't as disciplined as my female patients when it comes to these things. Really? And they're, they're all about instant gratification. Not that a lot of people on both sides of the, the fence um, aren't, but men tend to be less patient. And at least in my practice. So they want their testosterone go right up because they want to lift weight and they want to build muscle. And, um, and so for me, I had lost 30 pounds last year from changing my diet and I'm working out. And so I was talking to one of my buddies who's in healthcare too. And, um, you know, he works out, his husband doesn't. And so I made a comment about, uh, you know, well, we just need to build a little build a little bit of muscle. And he's like, he's like, man, that takes some testosterone, baby. And I'm just like, got to think I'm go, well, you know what? I don't think I want to try injections first, you know? Right. So how can I naturally get my, to stimulate my body to build testosterone? So, you know, the literature, um, the precursor, and there's a number of precursors, but DHEA is one that you can actually supplement. And so I supplemented that. And so, but just like with women, Excess testosterone in men changes to estrogen because men need estrogen too. So okay. we all have the same, um, just different amounts. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. And so, um, which is good. So I'm a male nurse and I'm the guy that cry, cries at a Doritos commercial. Um, it's because, you know, I have those nice mood changing things, but I'm okay with being sensitive. You know, it allows me to be vulnerable. Um, it's helped me in my relationships and, um, and it's okay. And I'm tough enough. I mean, I'm a rugby player and I'm a combat veteran. I'm tough enough to, to handle it. If I cry in front of one of my guy friends. Well, now, personally, I think you're dipping into a bigger, bigger, bigger conversation that, um, I might be the, the, the Opposite. one. I might be the one to speak a little stronger on, and that is, I believe that uh, all men are sensitive. It's just, it just depends on what level of, um, how much they have worked to hide that sensitivity because, you know, boys are raised to be tough and, you know, not show their feelings and all that, but that's a whole nother subject. Sure. We're not gonna that's, talk about today, yeah. but, that's that whole but, five yeah. pillars of wellness piece, right? Yeah. So that's all yeah. we're talking about the actual physical component of the hormone yeah. interaction, not the mental or emotional health that comes yeah. along with it. And the thing is, and, and when we started this conversation, not necessarily really to just go off on the whole, you know, testosterone. Male, yeah, we, we, I didn't think we were going to do that, but that's okay. It's okay that we did because it's a valid, it's a valid subject and one that doesn't get talked about very much because men are in that whole, oh, well, you know, I shouldn't have feelings and shouldn't be vulnerable and all that. But, um, but on a broader spectrum, hormones in general, I think personally that the general public does not give them hormones the amount of respect that they should because, you know, I mentioned to you before we started, my granddaughter has type 1 diabetes and she goes to see an endocrinologist every three months for a checkup to, to you know, look at her hormone levels, look at her, you know, endocrinology stuff. Um, I know just about en enough about it to be dangerous, but I do know how, what a huge role that hormones play in so many things like uh, mental health, for example. Um, I know that hormones play a huge role in depression and, and anxiety and all kinds of things. And, you know, it's not just testosterone. It's not just, you know, estrogen it's all, all kinds of things that it can that it can yeah. wreak havoc at times 
Yeah. So hormones regulate your body. I mean, let's just right. get what it is. And so right. hormones protect your body. So we know you've heard of the fight or flight response. Yeah. yeah. So I'd like to say fight, flight, or hide. Oh, that's, yeah, I've never heard okay. that. Yeah. And so this is your adrenal glands release those hormones that help you survive. Right. Yeah. Yes. You know, yes. and, but they also protect you. And so I was talking to a patient and I broke down the examples that, so to keep on task, we won't go in that direction, but we could literally have, you know, conversations on each hormone um, that won't even be touching the surface even at the highest level in a 30 minute conversation. So, but the adrenal glands release hormones. And so that's your, your, your fight, flight or hide response. The thyroid, the thyroid regulates everything, you know, everything. And yes. so you need a thyroid releasing hormone to get to the thyroid stimulating hormone to get to then the hormones that are actually released. And um, there, there's a huge amount of, uh, because people look at numbers, like I, yeah. so just as a habit in, in talking to someone like this, not in my practice, because in have in practice, I do exactly what you said, ranges. I hate ranges yeah, and I hate numbers. And the reason why is because all those ranges that we see in the laboratories, mm -hmm. those ranges were made off of healthy people. Right. They weren't made right. off of sick people. Right. So just because that's the range, doesn't mean you're not having symptoms which right. means that things might not be right. And everybody's and so, different. Everybody's different, yeah. And so I take the range and the number with a grain of salt. Um, mm -hmm. I use my range as for effect, right? You know, yeah, just for that, wrong you, with know, it. Yeah. you know, so, um, but when I look at thyroid, especially, thyroid regulates your temperature and we actually have a very wide range in the labs. And there's a, group of people that study the literature and, and publish that we believe that the thyroid range should be much narrower, right? Yeah. Because it regulates metabolism, it regulates temperature and these kind of things. And so if it goes out of whack, what happens? You gain 10 pounds. And how easy is it to lose 10 pounds? It's not. No, it's not. Right. And are you going to go just changing the way you regulate things? Um, just be, you know, so it's, it gets to be very, very, very complex, but, um, I love it. I have a lot of hypothyroid patients. I have a few hyperthyroid patients actually on my website. Oh no. On my YouTube channel, there's a, uh, an interview with one of my patients who's had thyroid issues for over 20 years. And, um, in this past year, she's lost 45 pounds. She has energy. Oh, wow. She feels good. Um, she's just doing amazing so much so that she wants to start coaching people who have thyroid issues, right. And right. letting them know, look, it's possible. And, it, and it's so, uh, she works very, very hard. I'm super proud of her. So, well, we could talk about this all day. It's a yep. huge subject. So I want to say to anybody watching that if there are from a, from a personal experience standpoint, like there when I look back now and, you know, in my thirties, I can see how my hormones at that point in time, my hormones were definitely playing a role in a lot of things. And, you know, sometimes we beat ourselves up for feeling a certain way or behaving a certain way, gaining a little extra weight or feeling kind of lazy or feeling kind of down and depressed. And it's not always necessarily consciously what we're doing or thinking, but sometimes it, it can be your hormones are out of whack. So I just want to encourage people. It's Dr. Janice. No, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> but no, I think I, it's great. A, yeah. I mean, as a woman who has been through some of those things myself, you know, I would encourage anybody who is struggling with something and they feel like they're doing all the right things and it's still not working to, you know, get with their doctor, get with you, you know, Dr. Yeah. John and and look into hormones and, and how it might be affecting you. It's, it's tough to find someone to listen. Um, but once it you is. do, once you do, it's, it's a life sense. So um, I take care of my wife 
and um, my wife was on antidepressants for over 20 years. She had a, a uterine ablation, you know, she had, all, everyone just kept treating the symptoms. And mm -hmm. so last year, she's just like, you know what? We've had all these symptoms treated, but yet I feel the same. Right, and how frustrating is that? Yeah, and so I had started my practice that year and she's just like, will you take, will you take care of me? And, and so that's kind of hard, right? Cause she's my spouse. Right. And, um, but I was so vested in her and, and her, it affected me too. Right. And, yeah. um, and so we, we've been going down this hormone journey together. And so, um, we got her thyroid adjusted and fixed, uh, not fixed, but a, her thyroid, um, levels within a range that's healthy for her that mm -hmm. her body is responding, that she can recognize. We did some lifestyle change with diet and did some gut healing things. And even with the sex hormone thing. So she's, you know, because now she's had the ablation. So she, you know, now she has nothing, you know? And so, well, she has parts, but they're burnt. <laughs> but anyway, so, but a little, a tiny bit of estrogen and some progesterone, a little bit of testosterone. And now, I mean, she's, she's going to be 54 this year. And so uh, she's back to almost her pre her marriage weight, her pre marriage weight. Nice. And she feels good, and she has energy to exercise, and and you know she just looks in the mirror and she loves herself again, that's and that's crazy. the most important thing to me is you know, as you are, you are enough. It doesn't mean that there's not some things going on in the body, and so unless you dive into the root cause of what's going on, you may never find these things. So to your listeners, to our listeners, ask your provider, what's causing this? Why is this going on? This, this is not feeling normal. This is different for me. You might say I'm normal range, but I'm, I'm not normal. I'm not feeling my normal self. So let's walk, let's take this journey together. And um, because there's no reason why I should feel any different, right? Unless there's a disease process. That's right. That's right. And a lot of people I think are feeling that way. So we're going to wrap at that. Yep. And I just want to say, um, took me a few days to get my allergy and sensitivities uh, hair sample off to the to the company. So I haven't gotten my results back yet, but I'm hoping that I will have them back in time for us to meet next Wednesday um, on our regular time. And so next week we're going to, if it comes in, we're going to look at the results from my allergy and sensitivities test. And I'm excited about doing that. I'm very curious to see what they say, because I know there's something, but. You better show them to me first, because I have I never will. read the test. I will, I will. Throw me, on the, be, throw me on the spot on Facebook Live. Yeah, like you never put me on the spot on Facebook Live, making me <laughs> blush in front of everybody. What the heck? We're going to talk about that when we get off of here. So thank you for watching us. If you're still here all the way to the end, kudos to you because I know we talk a lot. And um, we'll see you again next sure. week. Thank you, Dr. John. Always, always. I appreciate Bye. you. Thank okay. You. Bye, everyone.